three teams of young engineers battle to build some of the world's most fuel-efficient cars. High-tech vehicles that can do thousands of miles per gallon. They are pushing technology and themselves to the limit. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Who will succeed when the teams go head to head? Who will face disaster? This is the world of Shell Eco Marathon. The Eco Marathon is a competition to find the world's most economical vehicles. It's open to student engineers as a way to inspire them to design, build, and race the next generation of automotive technology. With oil running out and the number of vehicles on the planet set to double to 2 billion by 2050, these tiny cars offer a glimpse of the future. Start your fuel-efficient engines. Good luck. Today, Shell's Eco Marathon is a global series of events held across Asia, Europe, and the Americas. In spring 2013, 150 student teams converged on downtown Houston, Texas to battle for the America's title. This is the story of three of those teams. It's mid-February in Canada, with just seven weeks until the big event. And a team from Université Laval, Quebec, is getting ready for this year's challenge after a nightmare last time out. My name is Philippe Bouchard. I'm the general manager of Allerion Super Mileage Team from Laval University, Quebec, Canada. We won Chelico Marathon three years in a row, but last year we had a disaster when our car wouldn't start. So this year we changed things a little bit. We made smaller teams that works on specific areas of the car. Uh, among them you have Louis David who works on the electronics. You have Guillaume who designed the shell. And we have Lucas who's in charge of the clutch system. And last but not least, we have Audrey, our driver. I'm training because I want to lose some weight for the competition. One of the keys to winning the Eco Marathon is to keep the all-in weight of the car as light as possible. So Audrey is trying to get as close as she can to the minimum driver weight allowed, 110 pounds. To minimize weight further, Laval uses an ultra-lightweight carbon fiber body. The car category is called a prototype. These are single-seat, three-wheeled cars. The two wheels at the front of the car are for steering. The rear wheel is for drive. The Canadians compete in the highly competitive gasoline fuel class. Their motors started life as a single-cylinder, three-and-a-half horsepower lawnmower engine but it's been heavily modified to improve fuel efficiency. This package is a winning formula. Laval currently holds the All-America's gasoline prototype record of 3,168 miles per gallon. It's a good occasion to prove ourselves to the world, what we can do and what we can accomplish as young engineers. At the Shell Eco Marathon in Houston, each car is supplied with an identical amount of fuel. The fuel efficiency is then calculated over 10 laps of the 0.6 mile circuit. But completing the 6 mile distance isn't easy. As the Canadians know only too well from last year. It was uh, quite a disappointment. Uh, we worked as hard as we could, but uh, we had uh, major issues in the engine control. We tried and tried to to uh, start the engine by pushing a little button like more than 10 times. Over here. Never worked, so it was very frustrating. Getting such a fail last year, we feel like we have to get back on top. Now, with just seven weeks until the competition, there's intense pressure on Louis David and his team to redesign the engine management system so that the motor runs consistently. 
But so far, they haven't even got it started. The bolts we were using to the crankshaft position just snap off. <laughs> uh, what is? It was so close to starting. We have some combustion, so the the force just broke the our uh, tree uh, plastic bolt. So we've got to uh, replace them. <laughs> Meanwhile, 860 miles south in the United States, there's growing excitement among the students at James B. Dudley High School. How you doing? I'm Terry Wallace. My name is Nazi Mogao. Hey, I'm Brian Coos and I'm team captain of the Dudley Motorsports. My name is Zachary Apple. I'm Rochelle Messovid and I'm the driver. Who are we? Dudley! Who are we? Dudley! For me, being in this competition is just very exciting. I just can't wait to get there. I love this. It's the best thing I have ever done with my life so far. It's a life-changing opportunity. And we're ready to win! These high school students come from a deprived neighborhood of Greensboro, North Carolina. The team here at James B. Dudley High School is unique. They're from about five to six different countries and speak about 10 different languages. They're just learning English. They don't usually have a lot of money. A lot of them have come from refugee camps. So of course, they don't have anything when they get here. Resources in the school are also stretched. So the students are forced to build their cars on virtually no money. Red, flip the switch. It's on. Flip it the other way, it's backwards. In two years competing at Houston, the Dudley Panthers have failed to record a single valid result. This year, they're hoping to double their chances of success by entering a car in both eco-marathon vehicle categories. Their first car is in the prototype category, the same as the Canadians if a little more basic. Their second will compete in the urban concept category. This is a more practical vehicle. Among other things, it must have headlights, turning signals, and four wheels, closer in design to the cars you see on the road. There are also six fuel categories to choose from. The Panthers have opted for battery electric for both cars due to the lower development costs. Their lack of cash has also forced them to approach their builds very differently to other teams. Both cars are made entirely from junk. We just don't have enough money to buy new things to, to the car. We always have to recycle. These back here, they're from the umbrella from a picnic table. Let's see. This right here comes from a treadmill. These right here are vacuum poles. This is a child booster chair. And that's where the engineering comes, where we find something in the shop or find something in the road. And we need to think about how can we apply it to the vehicle. And it works real good. 4,800 miles further south, in the Brazilian surf mecca of Florianopolis, there's trouble in paradise for Team E3. Last year, the Brazilians finished seventh in the same category as the Canadians. This year, they're aiming for a top three place. Time is their greatest challenge. Due to the distance from Texas, the boys and girls from Brazil must freight their car to Houston a week earlier than the teams in North America. This means a week less to build and test the car. And with just a month to go, there's only a frame and a pile of parts. We need to get the car ready this week. It means hard work and some late nights. It's almost midnight and we're still here. We have to finish it tonight, otherwise our schedule will, will suffer a big delay. 
new driver, Christina, is worried. She's only just joined the team and is desperate to test drive a completed car. I'm really nervous because I'm still going to learn how to drive the best way. And last year, our driver crashed, and I really hope I don't do this. The team have to assemble everything before trying to run the engine for the first time. They work into the early hours to get it done, but fatigue sets in. We forgot about the oil in the engine, so that would be bad. Finally, at 4 a.m., they're ready to start the engine. Ah. Well, we started the engine, but we couldn't keep on moving, keep on working. We actually don't know why, but then we had some problems with the starter of the engine. At least the horn is working. For the Dudley Panthers in Greensboro, North Carolina, building two cars from scrap is proving time consuming. As the Houston deadline looms, their to-do list is daunting. So what we gotta do is get the wires straight. On top of that, we also need to work on the body. The you know, on the steering, the outdoors. You need to make sure that the, the brakes work, <laughs> the engine. Yeah, but not only that, it's like unorganized. They are way behind schedule. Head of automotive mechanics Ricky Lewis calls a crisis meeting. The if they can't get their act together, they won't be everybody. going anywhere. I worry about y'all. You guys got to be about it. You got to give focus, attention to what you're doing. I guess, who wants to go to Houston? But you got to show enthusiasm, energy, work your butts off out there, okay? No standing around, work. This is one shot. One shot, guys. It's a once in a lifetime thing. And if you guys think, sit around and think you're just going, and if you think you can't win, you've lost already. Guys, we gotta dig in. You need to go back out there and say, we're gonna be successful. That's what we want you to do. We want you to be successful. Let's knock it out, guys. Mmm, mmm, work, work, mmm, come on. What he said, it was just very, very true, man. I didn't really like it, but you know, it needs to be done. In Brazil, the build is also behind schedule. And we are just uh, discussing the problems we are facing because we are really delayed in our project. Now we just decide we're going to do what we must do and not what we would like to do. After failing to get the engine running last night, the team makes final adjustments before trying again. We just broke our engine. They must strip and rebuild it from scratch. The team has badly misjudged the time it takes to assemble a car, and the broken engine forces the co-captains to make a critical decision. I think the best would be to postpone the test with the car for yeah. two weeks. This new schedule allows them more time to rebuild the engine, but little time to test drive the completed car. The time Christina thought she had to perfect her driving style has just disappeared. In two weeks, the car must be shipped to Houston. Let's hope that my part is okay too. <laughs> I have to practice. In Canada, the winter weather drastically restricts testing. Quebec is known for uh, having one of the worst winter in North America. We get snow and ice, and it's uh, pretty much freezing all through the winter. So uh, that's a big problem for us because we can't test the car outside. But the Canadians have planned for this. The kind of innovation that we need to develop to overcome the weather 
our you know a dynamo meter like the one we have right here uh, which allow us to make some engine tests inside and we can know our our fuel consumption and also the torque that we develop during the winter on the track the Laval team will use a crafty driving technique when the car reaches 18 miles per hour they switch off the engine and the car coasts to save fuel. The engine is restarted when the car's speed drops to 10 miles per hour. It's called a run-kill strategy. With this strategy, we can go really far because we're not running the, the engine all the time, so we save fuel. The winter weather also prevents team driver Audrey from driving the car outside until she hits the track in Houston. This is her first and last opportunity to sit in the car, to check out her driving position, and practice the run-kill procedure. When I want to turn off the engine, I turn the switch like this uh, off. And when I want to start the, in the engine again, I push the start. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> oh, like this. <laughs> like this, uh, and uh, we won't uh, do it uh, now. <laughs> South of the border in the USA, the Dudley Panthers are turning things around. Their car might be ready for a test drive, but their driver isn't. I'm a little nervous. I feel fat. <laughs> This is the moment of truth, when the Panthers find out if their hard work has paid off. Okay, we gotta go now. Watch your heads. I think we're gonna do it right in here for right now. But there's a problem. Driver Rochelle is a driving novice. Just go real easy. Wait, 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 whoa! Hey, guys. Okay, the faster you go, the easier it is to turn. Okay, come on around. Hey, guys, see that wheel went down? Slow it down a little bit. Don't go too fast there. Try to get you used to it. Whoa! Whoa. Is she all right? Is she all right? No, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. Okay. I kind of flipped the car over a little bit, but now I learned what mistakes I did wrong and I'm going to do better. Us Dudley Panthers, we're not going to let nothing stop us. Very good. Great day. Brazilian workshop, the team have repaired their engine. Abre a borboleta. It starts first time. It looks like their worries are over. Yeah, I'm the guy. Brenner spoke too soon. The engine breaks again. It's not just the engine that's destroyed. Their schedule is also in pieces. They have just three weeks until the Eco Marathon in Houston, but they need at least a week to ship the car there. This leaves them just two weeks to rebuild the engine for a second time and get the car race ready. Time is running out fast. It's very bad, our situation right now. We need, like, plan B. For me, plan B is to to leave the, all the powertrain here, ship the car without it, and so we will have three more weeks to work on it. Rodrigo's radical plan involves freighting the car to Texas without the engine. This would give them three more weeks to fix the motor before they reunite car and engine at the competition. We won't have any test, but at least we can try to work with the fuel injection here. We can try to do something. That's my plan B. I hate your plan B. That's not my problem. In Quebec, the Canadians replace their broken engine bolts. And with some encouragement from a heat gun, try to start up the engine again. Engine reliability isn't the only element they must improve to beat their All America's record, 3,168 miles per gallon. Another key factor is how the car cuts through the air. 
This year, they are modifying the aerodynamics to reduce drag by nearly 14%. Having a really aerodynamic shell is our biggest advantage compared to other opponents. We are way ahead compared to uh, all the other team in America. In the United States, the students from James B. Dudley High are also working hard to be ready for Texas. Three weeks to go, and their vehicles are shaping up nicely. Very good, guys. But like the other competitors, their cars must conform to a strict upper weight limit. The Panthers are confident their prototype is fine, but their urban concept car is much heavier, and to weigh it accurately, they head to a local salvage yard to use the giant scales. Okay, so somebody get in. The maximum weight in this vehicle category, excluding driver, is 450 pounds. So, so now we gotta get off of this here, right? Yes. And you said we could, we got to be how much? 400. Okay, 400 pounds on the money. Ain't that something? Okay, so we're good. We're good. The team make the most of their time in the scrapyard by cashing in some of the unused junk from their workshop. Four, look at that, four dollars and 20 cents. Okay, man, thanks a lot. We do appreciate it. Okay, thank you. On their shoestring budget, every dollar counts. Next, mentor Ricky decides his crew could use an image makeover. Well, all of our mail items are over there. But when you're struggling with a tiny budget, this means a trip to the local thrift store. We're gonna stay below $20. If you can find one for 10, that would be really, really good. Many of these high school kids have only recently arrived in the U.S. with nothing. That look off. For others, buying a smart jacket is a new experience. You don't put coats on like that, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And 15. Okay. Is that everything? That's everything. Okay, we have a subtitle of 72.59. Okay. $73 in spending, so it's well worth it. Because people pay attention to what they see first, and then they listen to you. Down in Brazil, co-captain Rodrigo has a new plan to make up for lost time. We told all the guys that the car is going to be shipped earlier than it was supposed to be shipped. We're just like lying to them because they usually work better on a tight schedule. The deceit works. Lead engineer Pimpa has repaired the engine. And for the last two weeks, the team have been working all hours to get the car ready so that Christina can have a test drive before it's shipped to Houston. With the shipping deadline in two days, finally everything seems to be going right. Except the weather. Unbelievable, unbelievable. We were supposed to test the car today, and guess not. The whole of the ground floor of the engineering department is underwater, but thankfully, the car is okay. If we were in the corridor, the project would be lost, totally. For team driver Christina, it means at least another day's wait to test drive the car. She's beginning to think it's never going to happen. I'll actually have to practice in an imaginary car. You'll come back in here somewhere. In North Carolina, the Dudley Panthers are in good shape. They have two cars built and ready for test driving. Yes. Sharing time behind the wheel with Rochelle is new recruit Ruth Delifa. Okay. You put my jacket on. The seat fits, the car fits, I can reach everything, so it's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm kind of nervous. So let's do it. The girls' driving styles could not be more different. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down! Whereas Mustalifa is overly confident. Stop, 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 stop! Rochelle has lost her nerve. 
following her crash the previous week. Come on, come on, don't stop, come on. She's losing that confidence again. But going all the way around, make you a big circle. Okay, okay let's go. To maximize fuel efficiency, Eco Marathon rules state that drivers must average 15 miles per hour over their 10 laps. Teacher Ricky is looking for both girls to drive at a constant speed. Okay, that's what I want right there. She got it. Okay, stop it. Much better, you didn't go as fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, there you go, that's what I want. For Rochelle in particular, the extended seat time gives her a crucial boost. All right, all right, all right, all right. How does it feel? Ah, it feels good. Okay, okay, all right. That felt good because I didn't do the mistake that I did the last time. I am really confident about it because, you know, that we've worked really hard for this project and I'm pretty sure it's gonna pay off. I think it was very successful. We're leaps and bounds from what, where we were last year. The vehicle looks pretty good, drives pretty good. Um, and I, I think we're in good shape. The kids from Dudley High have pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After days of bad luck, the Brazilian's car is finally ready for its first test drive among the flood debris. With just a week until Houston, they must freight it tomorrow, or it won't arrive in time for the competition. If something goes wrong, I'll be devastated. It's a big moment. Driver Christina isn't trusted with the car's maiden voyage. Instead, Chief Engineer Pimba is given the hot seat. The engine runs perfectly, but there's no power to the wheels. The rear wheel broke, and now we're gonna have to take the car back, sit, and have a pleasant conversation. Um, we're students. If we don't break anything, we don't learn from it. So we're supposed to break things. This time, the screws connecting the drivetrain to the rear wheel have snapped. They have just 12 hours to fix the problem before the car is shipped. We had two screws and both of them broke. And now we are adding four more screws and replacing the two screws that broke. Pimba pulls off another miracle and they are set for a second attempt. Christina is finally given the driving seat, her first and last chance to drive the car before it ships tomorrow. They told me to go slow, first time, just to test. It was really, really great. I'm looking forward to doing it in Houston. It's been an almighty struggle, but they've done it. We are very, very, very relieved that we did this tonight. The car is boxed up, with work still to be done on the fuel injection system. But the team has high hopes of bettering last year's seventh place. To go, the Canadians are fine tuning their engine. Every team has done its job and we put it together this tonight, bench it, test it, and it worked. What a night. We also uh, succeeded in starting the engine every time, so that's a good thing for us because usually the reliability of the engine is the most important part. Yeah, I think we're in a good way to uh, reach a win at Chalet Comato. With testing complete, the team packed up for the 1,700-mile drive to Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. A few more cars coming in. And the Shell Eco Marathon 2013 is in town. 
Over the next four days, 150 student teams will fight to have their eco car crown the most fuel efficient on the planet. Competition takes place in two vehicle categories, prototype and urban concept. Within each, there are multiple fuel classes. The teams race repeatedly to improve their car's fuel economy. Eventually, the car that completes 10 laps of Houston's 0.6 mile street circuit, using the least amount of fuel, wins. And the Canadians arrive looking confident. The Brazilians still have work to do. If they're to challenge for the gasoline prototype title, they never completed their electronic fuel injection system. Uh, we just have to finish something, the uh, steering system. Then we have to do the, all the mapping of the fuel injection. Uh, with the fuel injection, we can go further. The fuel injection system could improve mileage by up to 30%. But if they don't get it to work properly, the car will actually use more gas. It means working through the night again to be ready in time. Something very big in our project. You know, we spent a lot of money, we put a lot of effort on this. It's time to make it work. The Dudley Panthers leave their arrival in Texas until the last minute. And there's dramatic news from prototype driver Rochelle. I was unable to, uh, you know, get a, um, a license to be able to drive. And for safety reasons, I don't think it's a good idea to drive. So teammate Juan steps into the driving seat to replace her in the prototype. Both cars have arrived intact by road from Greensboro. But once out of the box, there are issues with the brakes on the prototype. We got a little problems here, not really, really bad. Some little things we gotta isolate. It's vital both cars pass technical inspection. Otherwise, they will not be allowed to compete. Technical inspection is a series of safety checks that each vehicle must pass. And the Canadians are ready for it. We have some fine tuning to do this evening, but everything will be fine. The team passes all the safety checks, but their biggest concern is the weigh-in. At this competition, the top prototypes weigh an average of 120 pounds. The Canadians need to be less than 100 if they hope to win and break records. We put a lot of components that are a lot more reliable, but are a little bit slightly heavier. 97 pounds. We're a little bit heavier than last year, but this is not a problem. At 97 pounds, the car weighs less than their driver. It's a great start, and as one of the first teams to pass technical inspection, they can now test their car on the track. For the Dudley Panthers, it's a different story. Still worried about their prototype's brakes, they head to inspection. I just really, really hope it's going to pass because we worked really hard. At first, Everything goes well. You passed it. You're awesome. good. <laughs> but then it's the brake test. Let go. The brakes right. must hold the car on the slope. Oh, uh, no. All right, you're gonna have to squeeze, man. With both hands. Let's try the rear. All right. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. All right. Okay. They didn't pass. That's not good. So it's back to base to fix the brakes. Outside on the track, the Canadians are ready for their practice run. Their first aim is to break their own Eco Marathon record set four years ago, 2,756 miles per gallon. Last year, they didn't even get over the start line. Will this year bring more heartbreak? <laughs> it works, finally it works. Team E3 from Brazil have been struggling with their new fuel injection system, and the clock is ticking. We have half an hour to pass the tank inspection, otherwise we won't run 
tonight. We won't run tomorrow morning. With time almost up, they decide to enter technical inspection without their high-tech fuel injection system. We always leave things to do in the last minute. Technical inspection closes at 5.30 and it's like 5.30 right now. They make it, but yet again, there are problems. The starter isn't working, I don't know why. Chief Engineer Pimba has just minutes to fix the starter motor. If he can't, they will lose another day on the track. Thank God. Those are the stickers we've been waiting for. Technical inspection approved, safety inspection approved. We're good to go. On track, Canadian driver Audrey is going well. Laval's run-kill strategy is working. She kills the engine and allows the car to coast so as not to burn valuable fuel. But it's a tactic that has risks. Starting and stopping the engine drains power. And this battery has run flat. It should be a simple case of changing it. And we're putting the best battery we have, so uh, hopefully it does well. But even with a new battery, the car won't start. I worry a little bit about the fact that I don't know exactly what's happening with our engine right now. For the moment, I have no clue. The team works long into the night. Next morning, after only three hours sleep, the exhausted Canadian team gets in line for the first run of the day. It turns out the street circuit rattled the engine's electrics loose, but with everything tightened up, the car is good to go. We stayed up till four in the morning to get the car ready, and it's gonna pay off for sure. Track complete, Audrey pulls into the measuring station. Everything went well, but uh, we have to have the numbers. The amount of fuel used over the 10 laps is measured and miles per gallon computed. Uh, our best score two years ago used uh, 8 milliliters of fuel. We just used 6 point something. break their own eco-marathon record with a new figure of 3,000 miles per gallon. Next, they're determined to smash their own All-Americans record, 3,168 miles per gallon. Last year, the Brazilians achieved 969 miles per gallon to take seventh place. This year, they want a top three finish, but without their new fuel injection system, that seems unlikely. And we're hoping a uh, good mileage, not the, not the best, but a uh, first run, so we can fill the car and see how it's uh, going. The Brazilians are also using a run-kill strategy. But at this point, with all the problems they've had, they're more concerned with getting 10 full laps under their belt. Driver Cristina crosses the start line. And already there's trouble. The rear body panel is dangerously loose. Continua, continua, continua. Despite the rear panel falling off, the engine seems to be running well. But when she gets to the back straight, disaster strikes yet again. The run kill strategy has failed. The engine has stalled, leaving Christina dangerously exposed on a blind corner. But track officials mustn't touch the car for 30 seconds to allow her time to restart it. On the track, other drivers are only seeing Christina at the last second and missing her by centimeters. Right, 
Christina is unhurt. But what about the car? Uh, people just told me that uh, some other thing uh, hit us. Uh, that's not good at all. Might have been damaged the car in ways we can't uh, repair. As the car returns, without even completing a lap, their worst fears are realized. It's over. The front left wheel has been sheared off during the collision. The first lap. Yeah, that's really disappointing. After months of hard work and sleepless nights, it looks like their competition is over. After two days of working on their prototype, James B. Dudley High have fixed the brakes and passed tech inspection. It's now down to new driver, Juan, to negotiate Houston's corners. The guys have worked really hard over the weekend trying to get out here and all the work they've done back at school just for this moment. In their two previous years, the team has never completed the 10 laps. Good luck. Our goal right now is actually to finish the 10 laps. I'm nervous right about now. My babies begin to walk. He's right on schedule. He's at two minutes and 29 seconds. So he's actually running a real good time. How's your speed? Lap sits, man. Lap sits. Feeling very confident. But they're not there yet. Lap eight, man. Just two more laps to go, and they will have made Dudley High history. That was it. Nine. Yeah, that's nine. nine. Yes. Yes. First time ever finishing 10 laps. And not only did he finish it consistently, he finished it in style. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay. Meanwhile, the Panthers urban concept car is still struggling to pass tech inspection. Team E3 from Brazil haven't given up and think they found a way to reattach the wheel that was ripped off. They're off shop to buy new materials to repair the car. They work through the night to rebuild both the steering system and weld the broken pieces back together, improvising with a few tools they have at hand. It's the last day of competition, and finally, the Dudley Panthers urban concept is ready to race. But they are still having problems. The mic is not working. Um, we're trying to get the um, radio working before it gets started, because we got to position ourselves now. With time running out, they must get to the start line. Get the start line to go. Start line and the race marks will fly you on. And so their second car hits the track. Race rules state it must run 10 laps within 24 minutes and 45 seconds. But without the radio's work, no one can tell Ms. Delifa her lap times. It's going to be a close one because if she had 14 minutes now, she got five laps. We need to do 24 minutes. If she doesn't speed up, the, uh, the door. With no radio communication, the team can't tell her to speed up or that she must fix the door. And they're going to stop her. Um, they're yeah. probably going to make her get off the track. We try to, to speak so loud that she, she can understand that she has to pick up the door. Moose Alifa is trying to drive and fix the car's door. If she can't do both, she could be forced to retire. She got it, yes. We need one more lap to finish the, the race. But she got speed up. With seconds to spare, she makes it. They might not have won, but for the Dudley Panthers, it's a huge achievement. Awesome! Good job, man. And you can go again, you've got time. 
It's the last run of Shell Eco Marathon Americas 2013. And against all the odds, Team E3 from Brazil have made it back onto the start line. Everything's fine, you know, it was a miracle. Like, the guys did a great job. Most of the teams would have given up, but we didn't. But yet again, there are problems with the engine. Why? Why? Got a pandemia. It keeps coming. Christina limps across the start line. The chances of her completing the required ten laps look slim. To the Shell Eco Marathon will close at 2.15. After three laps and the end of the session looming, the Brazilians pull the car off the track in a desperate attempt to get the engine running consistently. The prototype starting queue for the third and final session will close in 15 minutes. The Canadians are back out on the track again aiming to beat their own record. I hope we're gonna get a good run. Let's go. I think, I think it will be our best car. If we can lower our fuel consumption a few percent, I'm pretty sure we can do it. Time is running out for the Brazilians as Pimba struggles to resolve the engine problem. The prototype queue is now closed. All teams that are on the track are the final ones on the track. It's over. Team E3 has failed to record a single result in 2013. We were very unlucky. So many problems, so many issues we weren't expecting. Uh, it's disappointing. It's just bad. Next year, there is Shall We Come Marathon 2014 waiting for us. It's a very different story for the Canadians. Audrey is setting consistent lap times. She's right on time, so that's good. She crosses the line. For me, uh, I have a good feeling, but we will wait for the result. In 2009, at a competition in Michigan, they used 6.9 milliliters of fuel to set their All Americas record 3,168 miles per gallon. You gotta be better than 6.9, right? Yeah. Okay. Five point eight on the nose. Five point eight. 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 Five Laval University with their vehicle number 77. After last year's disappointment, Team of Malarian Superminers from Quebec, Canada, a crowned Shell Eco Marathon America's Gasoline Prototype Champions 2013.